it gives me great pleasure to bring up my friend, Mindy Grossman, President and CEO of WW, formerly Weight Watchers, Mindy Kamana. <laughs> We're coordinated. I swear there was not a memo. I swear it. <laughs> I told her she has to wear red all the time. <laughs> yeah, she did. She told me that last night, so I'm actually taking Mindy's fashion advice into account, which if you know Mindy's background, that's an important thing to do. Um, before we get started talking about transforming an iconic brand, um, I know you've had a very exciting couple of weeks, but Many people might not be as familiar with your background and your road to WW as I am. And I think it's a really interesting story. Would you tell everyone a little bit about your background and what brought you to WW? Sure. So I spent almost 40 years in consumer-facing brands from menswear to womenswear to uh, sport, worked for Ralph Lauren for 10 years, Nike for six years, but running their global apparel business. Um, and then the last about 10 years, um, transforming uh, what was IAC retail with Barry Diller into an entertainment digital media platform, content, community, commerce. But the one commonality behind everything I've done is it's either been about reinvention, transformation, or accelerated growth. And the net net, seeing what something could be, not necessarily what it was today. The second thing is, is where I always gathered and went was where consumer behavior was going. And it's a lot easier to go into tailwinds than to headwinds, as everyone knows. So I, I'd been at my, my last company for a while. I was going to transition to chairman from, from CEO. We were going to put in a CEO. But you know, I, I, I knew there was something else out there that was gonna be very important to me. But I'd also made a conscious decision that anything I did next, not only did I wanna deliver a financial return on equity, I wanted to deliver a human return on equity. It was very important. And the last couple of years I was at my business, I was spending a lot of time on the what's next. Um, and I started speaking around the world on this idea that the brands of the future are going to have to take technology plus meaning and help people live more connected and fulfilled lives, which took me down the path of health and wellness. Um, and I was very intrigued with what was happening in the world and all the investments that were going into the wellness economy, et cetera. But I was also intrigued about the fact that all of this was happening, but no one was getting healthier. And I thought that, yes, there's tailwinds, but there has to be greater impact. And so when the opportunity came up and I started looking at Weight Watchers at the time, um, I got more and more excited that this incredible, incredible legacy brand that has been transforming people's lives for 55 years that was rooted and started by a young female entrepreneur on the idea of the science behind healthy eating for weight loss and the power of community. But now fast forward that today, where with the addition of technology to create greater enablement and the idea that not only did we have the permission, but we had the responsibility to be so much more than just weight loss because of that impact. And I got so excited about the idea of the impact that we can have on the world. And the real profound element for me was when I was doing all of this research and everybody kept saying, well, who's the competition, who's the competition? I finally said, frankly, the competition today is people thinking they can get healthy themselves and they need a partner and we want to be the partner. And then lastly, the really big thing for us um, is we want to be the brand that can democratize wellness, which it so greatly needs if you look at what's happening in the world. I couldn't agree more, and for those of you who have, did not see the news on September 24th, and I'm going to just ask that we have a video that plays in the background now. Um, it was pretty exciting with the name change that Weight Watchers officially went from, from Weight Watchers to WW. What was the motivation behind this name change, and what does this mean now for your consumers going forward? Yeah. 
The reality is that this was not in any way, shape, or form an overnight decision. We've been evolving over the last number of years uh, from this idea of being, you know, and I say the undisputed leader in global uh, impact on weight management to being more. And we've been evolving the WW to the mark of what I call global wellness. And we have significant proof points that the more we evolve, the more we evolve our content, the more we evolve our program, uh, the more we use science, community, technology to do so much more for people, it has greater and greater impact. Um, and so, you know, this move for us is very liberating, to be honest, because it really identifies who we are today and the fact that we can create what I call a 360 degree ecosystem for people's lives so they can build sustainable habits. Uh, hence, you know, in February, we launched our, what we call Impact Manifesto, and it was a body of work that was built from within of our new purpose and the impact we wanted to have on the world. And it's, we inspire healthy habits for real life, for people, families, communities, the world, for everyone. And we built our tenets and stated our bold moves. Um, and then, you know, we, we had an event, and we, Alice Tully Hall, we had a thousand people and we live streamed it to all 18,000 employees. We're actually a case study for Facebook Workplace. But a couple of weeks before we were about to do this, um, we talked and we said, you know what? This is very powerful, and we're also going to make a statement around our brand, our reputation, our business goals by the end of 2020. We're going to make this public. And we put out a press release, and we put it on our investor site. And it was the most profound thing we could have done for two reasons. One, for our entire organization, it was such a source of pride that we were coming out and making this bold statement of what we would do, but it wasn't an investor presentation that we showed our employees. It was a presentation for them that we made public to the world. And that was really the beginning of the power of being able to articulate this 10x vision and this impact uh, vision. And so over from February till now, uh, we've been working extremely diligently. I've, I've been here, I think we all need a little wellness. <laughs> um, to say what are those proof points that we have to do. So certainly one was the evolution from Weight Watchers to WW with the tag and the mark um, and with the tagline, wellness that works. And where that came from is in the course of all my time with the company, I've spoken to hundreds and hundreds of people whose lives have been impacted by what we do. Um, the first thing you say is why and they go because it works. It just works. Um, and it was very important that science be behind every single thing that we do. I spent a lot of time with Gary Foster, our chief scientific officer, and he is definitely my conscience. Um, and so, you know, how do we do that but now apply it not just to food and freestyle, which is our food program that came out in January, is the most successful and efficacious program we've ever had, the simplest. But we launched FitPoints 2.0, which is applying the science of food to fitness, more personalized for you around strength, duration, intensity. We announced a partnership with Headspace for mindset because what's part of wellness, what you put in your body, how your mind supports your efforts and how you move. We launched our first ever rewards and loyalty program different than anything that's out there. We do not reward you for spending money. We actually reward you for the efforts you take on behalf of your health. We launched WW Good, which we are very proud of, and that is our social impact platform to help underserved communities get healthier. We had six festivals, our first foray at North America. We took over the most trafficked communities, so Union Square in New York, Santa Monica Pier in um, LA, and they were fitness, mindset, sleep, everything you can think of. And for every person for free that crossed that threshold, it unlocked a free month of fruits and vegetables for a family in that community in need. And then... That's fantastic. It's, ama it's amazing what that engendered in the community. So you will see a very significant explosion of that going into next summer. 
Um, and then lastly, what we will never use is the massive power of community, whether it's Connect, which is our digital community, or the 30,000 meetings we still have every week face to face. Um, but now what we'll be able to do is bring community together, whether it's WW Crews, whether it's creating micro communities in Connect so young moms can be together. Um, so all of that came together in the last uh, couple of weeks and we'll be rolling out globally. Um, but it definitely is um, part of an ongoing evolution. And just like we say, health is a journey, wellness is a journey. There's no beginning, middle, or end, what you need in different periods of your life. Um, what we're going to deliver in value for people is also a journey, and we're going to continue to innovate and iterate and understand, you heard this morning, all the science. Um, and as we can apply that to help people lead better lives, we will. So I know you've had an amazing year. I mean, you've only been there about 14 months now or so, around months. there, 15 months. So there's no denying that under your leadership, and I looked this up, so these are interesting stats. Um, WW's member base has increased by more than a million. And just to put this into context, I think you're looking at about a million uh, consumers a month, a, a week are meeting around the globe, right, mm -hmm. for WW? And revenue over 20%. 1.6 million. Is that 1.6 million, that's amazing. But some would argue that you had a little bit of a tailwind in the form of a little known woman by the name of Oprah Winfrey whose investment in the company since she invested has actually helped the stock price rise 13 times in its value since she invested in about three years ago, right? So if she was here on stage, I would love to ask her the same question I just asked you, which is why WW and how did this happen? Sure, well, first, who wouldn't want Oprah on their board, right? She's been an incredible partner uh, visionary, but to your question, let me let her answer that. Hello, buongiorno to all of you who come together to help people around the world live well in body, in mind, in spirit. Oh gosh, do I wish I could be there with you. Mindy and Mia and all of you enjoying Italy. I love Italy! Uh, I also love sharing what I think is most powerful about this moment in time in our world. This moment, coupled with the power of the WW brand and our entire community, advances what we're all hoping for, which is a world that is healthier and thereby happier. I was inspired to invest in WW because I really believe that people around the world want to do and be the best they can. There is no difference in the human quality of life that everyone is searching for. And I saw that WW had the potential to actually elevate people to that higher purpose for themselves. So I became a member first, as most of you may know, before I joined the board, and I felt for myself the difference that this lifestyle had on my wellness overall. So Mindy and I like to talk about the opportunity for the WW community to inspire lives, uh, inspire people to be healthier, and to create a world that is happier because we've experienced it firsthand. And now, as Weight Watchers, evolves into WW, Wellness That Works, and as we frame all that we do around Wellness That Works, we believe that we can inspire people not only to eat well, but also to move more, to connect with others more, to live more mindfully and with more gratitude, to experience journeys of health and growth, because that's really why we're all here, to find wellness in the way that most works for them. So I know this is exactly what this summit was created to do, to create space for you all to make meaningful connections, to engage in conversations that inspire you to leave here with affirmed intentions for the work that you're doing to make wellness accessible to everybody. What I know for sure is that it's possible and together it's really possible. So I'm not in Italy. I wish I was, and I'm wishing you all the best. Oh, it's nice to see Oprah in Italy. Thanks for that, Mindy. <laughs> um, you know, I've been very inspired by both her and you, and I would say um, 
from both a personal standpoint, which I want to actually speak about. We've got about five minutes left. But before I do that, one thing you've always said is how much you wanted to not just transform Weight Watchers to WW, but make WW a true purpose-led brand. And there's a lot of talk about purpose out there and social impact. And I'm curious, what do you think it means you know, to delegates today that are trying to drive purpose-driven brands. What are the tips? Yeah. What are the thoughts around that? So I'm a, I'm a huge believer um, that if you don't truly have a purpose, no matter what product you sell, no matter what you do, and you're not aiming to have impact in some way, you're not going to have a long-term sustainable business. Uh, I've always been the one who said culture trumps strategy. It doesn't mean you don't have a strategy. But if you do not build it from the ground up and really set a vision and have everyone in the organization be empowered to be part of that vision, again, you're not going to have the longest, most sustainable business. Now, we are a purpose-driven culture. Everyone that is there, yes, they have a job, but we do believe we're having an impact on people's lives. Um, and I write a lot. I just recently wrote an article for LinkedIn on you know, leading a culture of purpose. Um, but I think it's more important today than ever. It's more important if you want to recruit talent, if you want to retain talent, um, if you want to have a real relationship with customers. But purpose is not words on a wall. Um, you have to define what that is and you have to live it. And so what we did when we came out with our impact manifesto, we created a purpose filter. And all 18,000 people in the company have a pad on their desk. It's in every conference room. And every decision we make, every action we take goes through that purpose filter. And actually, when we started putting everything through the purpose filter, we realized that we had some things that didn't fit. So you can eat anything you want on WW, anything. But we also make food products. We make snacks and we make you know, breakfast and we put them through and they didn't fit. So we said we are getting out of any product that has our name on it that has artificial ingredients, sweeteners, preservatives, et cetera. Well, it was 70% of all the products we made. You know what? We did it. And yeah, there was a financial ramification. <laughs> but what it allowed us to do was say, okay, we're doing this, but we're going to put a stake in the ground and we're going to own the healthy kitchen in food, in kitchen products, in, um, you know, fresh food in chef portfolios and everything we do. Um, and so we went out and we actually, uh, the team did an unbelievable job. We reformulated, we created, and we added. Um, and in January, every single product sold through our direct channels in all our new branding, it's all new product, and it all fits our purpose filter. And what it also allowed us to do was be out there in an unexpected way. So the reason I got here a little late on Friday, Thursday night at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, we had a big event. We opened our first WW Freestyle Cafe. It's healthy Mediterranean. Kat Cora is the chef. And we'll be doing those things around the world. And we never would have been able to do that if we didn't make the decision of who we are as a brand. That's purpose. That's fantastic. We have just a couple minutes left. I could talk to you all day. Um, one of my favorite things about you is actually your role as a grandmother and a mom. I, I don't know if anyone's ever seen, you've never seen Mindy light up so much or actually literally sit on the driveway with chalk and, and draw with her, her granddaughter, <laughs> Emma, who is a star. So tell me, and I know it's when we think about our families, this is like emotional, but as a mom, as a grandmother, like what, what does a well world mean for you and for Emma moving yeah. forward? So there's, there's two things that relate to that. Um, one is, if we think about a well world, we have to think about an inclusion and diverse world. And I don't believe that no matter who you are, whether you're male, you're female, you're race, you can be two people. You have to be one person. You can't have a work self and you can't have a human self. And I'm a big believer in transparency. Um, and being who you are, no matter where you are. So I think it's important that I reflect that for the organization, um, that there's no bifurcation, and you need to do, number one, what's right for your family, and you need to do what's, what, what's business. That's number one. But number two, as it relates to wellness, and now that I'm seeing it through my daughter's eyes as, as a mom, it reinforced for me the importance of having a partner to know what's 
right for you at any given part of the journey. Because what I want from my wellness goals at 61 and what my daughter wants as a young mom are completely different. She wants the power of a young mom community. She wants to know what's right for her if she's breastfeeding. I want to know what's right for me if I want a different workout. Um, I want to eat differently. So this idea of asking people what healthy means to them and what we can provide is so important. And, you know, we, we are probably the biggest, biggest proponents of body positivity in the world. And this idea of tapping into people's why at any given period of their lives and marrying what I call the functional and the emotional or the science and the needs is, is so important. And it becomes very emotional. I know we're up. I just have to tell one very quick story. So I, I, I get comment, you know, letters from our um, people in Connect and our, our members every day. And I got a letter the other day, an email, and I broke down in tears. And this woman had joined WW, and she was very uh, successful, and she was on Connect, which is our social platform. And for months, and then all of a sudden, tragedy struck, and her son committed suicide. And in her depths of despair, she shared that on Connect. And she had a few hundred followers, thinking 25 people would probably comment. Well, 11,000 people came to her support. They inspired her, they reached out to her, and she happened to say at one point, you know, I, I can't get out of bed, I've got to make cookies for my other child's, um, you know, school thing. People showed up at her house with cookies. And that's the power of community today, and there's no replacement for that. So if you can marry all of this, and you think of the profound impact we all can have on people's lives, making it personal, that's why we get up every day in the morning. So, the future well world is about community. Thanks so much, Mindy. Thank I really you appreciate so it. I'm sorry we can talk longer. Thank you.